Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Robert Kiviet's Objects Unknown, and I'm Robert Kiviet. Well, today we have an extremely interesting object to look at. It's called the Baltic UFO, but maybe it should, maybe it should be called the Baltic Anomaly. The story is that two Swedish treasure hunters by the name of Peter Lindbergh and Dennis Asberg were out in the Baltic area looking for treasure, and their sonar picked up what appeared to be a round, clearly unnatural looking object on the ocean floor. Now, initially they were baffled, but after some analysis, they pretty much went public with their photographs, and it created a firestorm of interest all around the world. People were calling it maybe the first UFO or underwater UFO ever found. And what's really interesting, it appeared to have ramps, stairways, strange openings, but they started to take a lot of heat about this because it looked like maybe they were using it for their own kind of promotional purposes. They were known for being treasure hunters and needing all kinds of money for their expeditions. So they took a lot of heat, but they decided they really need to get to the bottom of it and figure out if it was either an ET structure, a man-made structure, or maybe even a natural thing. So they were able to get a documentary made essentially tied to one of their um, dives and they found some extremely amazing evidence down on the bottom of the ocean. First of all, they found what appeared to be uh, linear straight lines that looked like maybe they were part of some sort of metal or some type of um, you know, structure but man-made. They took the video evidence of some experts and the experts found that maybe this area, this line, clearly could be a metal kind of structure, meaning that it was constructed by some kind of intelligence. And then they found what appears to be this kind of round hole that's surrounded by a square, and that looked like very unnatural architecture for something that should be on the bottom of the ocean. They're estimating anywhere from 14,000 years ago to maybe 140,000 years ago whether it was tied to the ice ages that we've had, whether it's tied to anything else, they really don't know. But the evidence started to mount this could well be an unnatural structure. So they were able to get really great evidence, and maybe the best evidence is this something called a multi-beam 3D uh, analysis. They were able to use this device where it kind of scans the ocean and the bottom of the floor and creates a 3D image now the 3D image is so compelling that it looks like it might be some kind of a crash where this object came flying in, came into the ocean, cracked through this mountain, left a trail straight where this thing kind of laid or stayed right on top of some kind of mountain area. And then what's really amazing is right to the right or above it, there appears to be another structure that could also be maybe part of something else that crashed. Now, some of the experts came in and started to say, well, maybe it could be a UFO that crashed. Uh, that doesn't seem to be quite likely based on all the evidence. Then other people came in and said, well, it could be a man-made structure. Maybe it got moved from an earlier time period by the glacier moving. But again, that doesn't really make sense because it doesn't seem that we had any kind of technology back, you know, 14,000 years ago before the last ice age or anything like that. So it gets to be really interesting. Now, the flyby that I'm showing you right now could very well be evidence of a crash. There are people that still think it could be a crash. There are people that think maybe it was a UFO. Uh, I tend to think right now, the more you look at it, it looks like it could be an, a, a natural structure that got somehow, you know, on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, over time, certain things happened to it. There are areas around the world that have very, very unnatural looking, you know, structures like Yoganuni Island near Japan. Uh, it looks like stairways. People think it may be tied to Atlantis. I don't know about Yoganuni, but there's no doubt this structure, I mean, could be natural. But on the other hand, there are very, very man-made looking or intelligent looking, you know, parts of this thing, especially this round hole with the circle, um, and the square around it, and then this line, which looks like a wall of some kind, and then the overall 3D that you see, it looks like it could be some kind of a crash site. So of the three different possibilities, extraterrestrial, uh, UFO landed there somehow, came flying in and crashed, uh, man-made structure, somehow got on the bottom of the ocean somehow, maybe that's where they left it, whoever the people were that built this thing, 
or it being a natural thing. I think if you really boil it down, it's an unknown, no doubt. But I think it's leaning much more toward, in my view, it looks like it could either be man-made or natural, not a UFO, not an alien. But you know what? We really don't know the answer to the question. So those are my thoughts. I'd love to know what you think. But overall, I think these guys, uh, Peter Lindbergh and, and Dennis Asberg, they really deserve a lot of credit. They've taken a lot of heat. I don't think they're hoaxers. I think they're absolutely trying to get to the bottom of it. And I commend these guys because I know how hard it can be when you're basically, you know, taking on these mysteries. So be sure to subscribe. Keep up with our show. We're really taking on a lot of different uh, mysteries here on Bill's channel. And looking forward to seeing you real soon. Take care.